how would you think about building volume? This could be, you know, training sessions. This could be individual, you know, movements um, in an actual session. How, like, is it all those things? How do you think about taking, again, that intermediate athlete, the example that we used before yeah. and building on them? Yeah. Well, I think really simply, if you lay out as you lay out a plan in your mind, what, what's my goal? The goal is if let's say a normal week of training, you did a thousand total reps and you can, you know, measure that however you want. And then a year from now in the same type of cycle, same time of the year, you know, they're at 1300 reps and they're adapting recovering to it. Like that's very, very reductionist on what you're trying to do with volume over time is you're trying to just, you need more like gross volume in the training. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how would you do that? So if you have this intermediate person, you're trying to make them go to the semis. Well, first we need to think about functional volume as in the amount of reps that are required in the sport. So to use easy examples, like you just said, 19.5, 105 chest or 105 thrusters. And that's about consistent with what is functional volume of those movements in the competitive setting at the open sanctional levels. Like you should be able to do a hundred chest to bar in a workout without tearing your hands and without having to do singles. And you should be able to do thrusters around hundred at those RX weights, uh, muscle ups, 20.5, you had to do 40 in an open workout. So now the functional volume ceiling goes up because before that it was around 30 reps. Yeah. So these become, and I wrote a article on this on our, our blog, Big Dogs, I think a couple of years ago. And I kind of outlined based off of the open, like what are functional volumes for particular movements. And so those become your beacons that you're trying to build somebody towards in their training. Like you need to be able to do a hundred chest to bar, you know, on a Monday, and then 100 on Friday and recover and not tear your hands, like just as one idea. And if you're getting closer to that over time, then you can say like, okay, you're, you're moving in the right direction for the sport. Mm -hmm. So we have functional volume. Then of course we have like where people currently sit. So of course we can do tests. Like for example, one test I give is 20 sets of five unbroken chest to bar for time, which is hundred and elite people do that in the low fours or under four minutes, depending on body weight. Um, and then five or four, four and a half to five and a half minutes is, is still good and competent. And then now you're getting above five and a half, six minutes, like, okay, there needs to be work done in this particular pattern. And that, and that could also be them tearing their hands, um, them having to, you know, do hanging like five sets of five instead of butterfly fives. So, getting some good tests to see where people currently sit, because let's say somebody does the hundred, the 20 sets of five in seven minutes, and they were doing smooth butterfly reps through 60 reps. And then the last 40 were just death. Then that tells you that right around 60 to 65 is kind of their threshold right now of what their system can handle. So then in training, you can start to build that in progressive weeks um, lower fatigue setting, most likely. And then, you know, progressively adding, uh, fatigue or, or complexity to it and then retesting. And that's just for one skill out right. of a hundred. Yeah. So that becomes challenging. Cause then you have to ask yourself, okay, well, what are, what are the lowest hanging fruits? What pieces are lacking the most? And then now let's figure out how we're going to prioritize those and work on them for extended periods of time while we're touching other things. Cause that's essentially, I would say what you're doing with these intermediate, trying to get them towards advances. You're picking a few pieces that you really want to improve. And then the rest you're just touching to make sure their systems getting in reps and exposure on a weekly, monthly basis. Um, because you can't, can't do everything every cycle. It's like, you need one or two main priorities. That's always kind of my hardcore rule. It's like, what are my two priorities? for the next four or five weeks. And let's really attack those and let's make sure everything else isn't pulling away from those priorities, but we're just getting, the, we're, we're sustaining the fitness characteristics we need in those areas. 